evidence is showing around that many people claim to hear God they actually don't hear. The voice of God comes with enough power to change anything if it is heard the right way. If it's heard with the right meaning in the way it should be heard. of the word is to flood your eyes with with the light right that the eyes of your understanding will be flooded with light that you will know what is the hope of your calling what is the glorious riches of inheritance of his head he says unto whom i'm least of all saints was given unto me this grace to preach the unsearchable riches of christ and he says and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery because the intention of every minister is to cause your eyes to see what they must see to cause your ears to, to hear what they must hear. To cause your heart to contemplate the things it must contemplate. Not necessarily to cause you to hear. Sometimes we think that God only communicates to us only to hear. No. Even deeper, how to hear and what to hear. Are you hearing me? When Jesus appears to Saul, of Tarsus. In his testimony, he says that a, a bright light was hid from heaven. Right? And the Lord Jesus spoke to him. But he says, but they that were with him did not hear what God was speaking to him. That communication was to Paul only. You see what I'm saying? When Jesus is giving his story, he said that the, when the testimony of Christ has been spoken in, in, in the book of John. The Bible says when the heavens opened, the Bible says they heard a thunder and in their voice. You understand what I'm saying? Now, some people can hear a voice. Some people can hear a thunder. God is not one dimensional. You, you understand what I'm saying? To, to Moses, he appeared through a burning bush but that was not the standard that he had to every time you saw a burning bush Jesus he was there you understand because the same fire came to Elijah and God was not in the fire you understand what I'm saying you know winds came and God was not in the winds and then he came through a still small voice you could even draw the standard and say God comes in a still small voice no that was to Elijah you understand what I'm saying when he's revealing himself to Paul he tells him when, he, when Ananias comes to open his eyes after his conversion. He says, for I have appeared unto thee. Jesus says, for this reason have I appeared unto thee. He tells him, that you might be a minister of those things you have seen and in the things in which I shall appear unto you. In other words, yes, the things I will show you are Jesus, as Jesus, but there are also things in which I will appear to you. So there's, there's, there's people who think, oh, you know what? I saw Jesus. I had a vision of Jesus. How is he looking like? And they give you the picture of the guy they see in the movie. He had long hair. And he was this. See, if, if anybody in this room has ever had a visitation, an encounter, let me call them an encounter, because New Testament creation does not, you know, use the language of visitation. He's in dwelling. But by reason, he might choose to have an encounter with you. For those of you who have encountered the person of Jesus Christ, he's beyond any picture can ever describe. You understand? He's beyond anything you can ever describe. But you see, he's not even limited in appearance by figure. He can appear any other way and you might never know. You see what I'm saying? Because the world has drawn this whole vague picture about how Jesus should appear or would appear. And that is why, like the Bible says in scripture, now no marvel, Satan has, is transformed like an angel of light. Because we are so limited in our understanding and discernment of the true revelation of this person. Many people have received forms of light and thought that this is the light of God, which is the person of Jesus Christ. 
if you're a reader of Islam, Muhammad said when he was in a cave, a light shines and angel Gabriel comes through. You understand? Some religions have a lady of light. And all of them come in a certain definition of light. But our light is different. It's not what the physical eye calls light. No wonder Paul says, at, at noon, a bright light. At noon, a bright light. In other words, this light was brighter than the sun at noon. It was enough to blind a man's eyes. But do you think everybody would understand what Paul meant that a bright light came at noon? Because at noon, it's already bright. You Americans have too much light. So you understand what I'm saying. When I talk about, you know, you're in the desert, so you know what I'm talking about. Now, you know how, how bright the sun is at noon, right? And, 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 and Paul says, at noon, a light came. And, and he knows there was a sun, but this one was brighter than the sun. And that's how, that's, it's through that that Christ appeared to Paul. He says, Saul, Saul, why dost thou persecutest me? And some people can think, well, now the standard is anytime I see the light, Jesus is here. You, you, can, you can create a doctrine out of that. But God is not limited to the doctrines that we have placed because of the monuments of the pre-existent experiences written. He's not limited to, to what is, is only collected together of what you have read only. He's deeper than that. Imagine if Peter's account was not given of how Jesus went in hell and preached to the souls of Noah. Huh? You remember that scripture? What if it was not written and somebody said it in 2019? What would it become? Heretic. Isn't it? Was it Jude that saw Moses and, and he saw Moses, uh, the body of Moses being fought for? You, you remember? Jude speaks of, well, because in the story, in the Old Testament, the Bible tells us Moses is taken to the Mount of Moriah and then he dies there. That's what we know. Then a man of the Spirit travels there, Jude. And then he sees war between Satan and the archangel, Michael, right? And then, you know, the angel says, God rebukes thee, isn't it? Now, if Jude had not written that and it was spoken in 2019, how many would believe that it was true? The Church of Jesus Christ, 2019. Mark you, what we have are letters. Paul didn't have letters. He wrote the letters we are reading and even contending over whether this is Jacob, Arminius, or Calvin. Now, that's them reading and in trying to interpret what Paul was trying to say. But in Paul's day, there was no what you have now in your hand or now on your phones or now in your head. Oh, now on the screens. You understand what I'm saying? Now, imagine that kind of experience and a man needs to coil a relationship with, with God and he must hear him so deeply that he draws the foundation of what we call the New Testament. Can you imagine just how much was coming to that man? Can you just think for a moment just how much was coming to that man? The Bible says cancer in the heart of a man is as what? Deep waters. But only the man with understanding can draw this counsel. All of that was in Paul's spirit. And just quoting Romans and Corinthians and, 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 and Ephesians and, and all these things, the church of Jesus Christ is standing strong. I wonder how Paul was like when he was teaching. How much clarity needed to come through one man that all of us are still quoting him. That almost three thirds, three quarters of, of the New Testament was written under this one man. Why is he the standard? Because some don't believe in the Pauline letters. That's their problem, not mine. You understand, at least my ministry living what we do, okay? Now, imagine just how much it had to take for such a man to receive such sacred oracles. They sat sit through his spirit and he directs churches in Corinth. He directs churches in Galatia. 
Rome, and all of them are receiving from one fellow who is capturing the voice of God at a frequency beyond many people are not able. Sorry, beyond many people are able. Right? In, in my ministry recently, I was sharing with people and I told them, look, if the disciples of, of, of John the Revelator met the disciples of Moses, they would fight. Seriously. Because you see, God tells Moses, build the temple according to the pattern I will show you at the mountain. And then the man builds holy of holies, holy place, and now the court. And God honors his presence and puts it on that temple. You understand? Because it doesn't matter the element you use. If it's in line with divine instruction, God will put oil on it. That's the principle. The Ark of the Covenant was built by no more gold. From the ground, it was nothing. But because it was built by divine instruction, God put anointing on it. God will anoint anything that obeys instruction, even if it does not speak the way you understand it. Do you understand what I'm saying? And that's why it's, it's very key to follow divine instruction. To understand when God, when he tells Noah, build this ark at this cubit high, this centimeters wide. Imagine a man receiving from God such communication. Even Cain, after killing Abel, in his most fallen nature, he's talking with God and God is talking back to him. Where is your brother? My, my brother's kid. This is a fallen man. You find somebody and you ask them, do you hear God? And they tell you, it's been long now. And you're like, what? It's been very many years. How long? Probably about 10 years or 4 years or 3 years is the last time I had the voice of God. Yet he could speak to a fallen fellow. And the guy is hearing him and even talking back. The curse you have given me is big. This, this is God communicating with. At what point then did humanity get so detached to this voice that now people are struggling to hear God? At what point? Because evidence is showing around that many people claim to hear God they actually don't hear. The voice of God comes with enough power to change anything if it is heard the right way. If it's heard with the right meaning in the way it should be heard. Somebody shout amen. Now, and, and it's more than just having the right doctrine. It's more than just hearing the right doctrine. Paul was teaching the right doctrine. In Romans 3, 8, men came and sat in Paul's meeting. And Paul says, some say that we say, let us do evil, so good should come. They slanderously report us, Paul said, that we say. They, they were there, they were hearing. But their ears had something else. Did you understand what I'm saying? Their ears had something else. They heard as though Paul was telling men to do evil, so good should come. Two, three men are sitting in the same meeting, but one man is hearing from another voice length, so voice print. One man is receiving another frequency, and they are all receiving the same thing. But one is barbaric, one is not. Somebody shout amen. So he tells Moses, build this according to, and, and God dwells there. And they say God dwells in the temple. He met them there, isn't it? Right? And then in the New Testament, well, the, the theology starts to change a little. Paul says, uh, I don't dwell. God does not dwell in temples built by human hands. Hmm? What? He doesn't. So who was in Moses' temple? John the Revelator goes into the book of Revelation and says, and I went to the place of the temple and I found no temple. He says, but Jesus the Lamb and God the Father were the temple thereof. I shared that before in my ministry. I said, now, you ask yourself, one man goes to a place and finds a temple, builds it according to the pattern. Another man goes to the same place and does not find a temple, but finds God the Father and the Son. Simply, you and I now should understand that God the Father and Christ the Son were the pattern. But to Moses, he could only appear through a temple form. Holy of holies, holy place and outer court because that's what Moses could understand. Now Moses can make a doctrine out of what he could understand and make 
men believe that that's where God is. No, that is where God met Moses. That's not where God was. So there's a difference between where God will meet you and where you will meet God. Somebody shout hallelujah. So when talking about understanding, it's, it's deeper than just, oh, and I think I understand what you mean. No, but where do you understand it from? When we say God is a healer, where do you understand it from? When we say God is a deliverer, where do you understand it from? When they say God is a provider, where do you understand it from? When we speak about an prayer, answered prayer, what do you mean? What do you understand by prayer? What are answers? What do you call God answered me? Some people think, <laughs> God told Daniel, the angel tells Daniel, from the day you set your heart to understand, comma, and to chastise thyself before God, comma, thy words were hard, and I'm set because of them. Yes, 21 days, the prince of Persia frustrated the answer, right? And when, when the angel is delivering this answer to Daniel, we actually realize it was revelation. So, Daniel was delayed in the spirit realm for 21 days for revelation to get to him. Yet he was seeking an answer for Israel's breakthrough. Now, when we're talking about the devil coming to kill, steal, and destroy, he's not coming to, to steal your radio. He doesn't have electricity in hell. He's not, have, they have, they, he's not coming to, to, to steal your car. There are no traffic lights there and, 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 and you know, highways like you guys have in America. They're not in hell. In hell, there are no cars to steal. What it comes to steal is just one word out of the full picture and make you read what is not supposed to be. That is why the first temptation was to turn stone to bread. Turn stone to bread. Because he knows the law is written on stone. Make it bread. And he says, uh -uh, man shall not live by bread alone. He says, is this one thing you want me to do? He says, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. The full entire word to the end. Not just the part of it. To get the full picture as you have to receive it. You understand what I'm saying? Because if you miss out the detail, if you remember the devil speaking to Jesus in the wilderness, he, he just twists a little. He, he, you remember the, 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 the serpent in the garden? He, he, he quotes God and simply changes the narrative a little. You understand? And when he changes the narrative a little, the Bible says he casts a vision on the woman. And the Bible says, and the woman saw. She saw that the tree was pleasant to the eyes, good for food, and desirous to make one wise. She, she saw wisdom in the spirit. In other words, even when Satan distorts communication, he distorts vision too. Vision is distorted when communication is distorted. When you receive co dis distorted communication, vision too is distorted. And that is why certain people have visions that are failing before them. Because what they see is not what it really is. And they, even if they cannot get it, even if you tell them to, they can't because they are convinced that they had God. And so if you had him, why didn't it work? Why did it fail if God said? No, probably you received the fragment. You missed out something. Somebody shout hallelujah. And that is why as a body of Christ, we have to go back to really understand what it means to have a relationship with God. To have a relationship with God. Because every other day the narrative is changing. Salvation has become so personal that men are no longer accountable. I can do anything I want. I mean God is personal. See, he's not personal beyond the borders of the liberty he has set in the spirit because part of that liberty requires our accountability remember it's not how much you have it's how much you can access 
If you have a hundred million dollars on your account, but you cannot access another dollar, you're poorer than the man who has only one dollar on his account, but he can access a hundred. Keep the windows always open. The windows of the spirit must be open constantly. Because with those ones, when the windows are constantly open, the doors, with the doors, you don't need to seek. When you find a seeker of doors, understand that the windows are closed. The Bible says, to whom much is given, much is required. The door opens to every man who has much. But we are opening the doors wider than the windows. Yet one window can open a million doors spiritually. Do you know one revelation can change your life? One experience like this. One vision you see can change your life. It can. So sometimes we limit God to where we are. To where we are. To where we are. The foundation of our altar is Christ. The flame that lights our path is eternal. The springs from which we drink are pure. The visionary who trumpets our cause is chosen. I cannot live a normal life and I cannot die a normal man. Something must happen in my day because I've understood salvation. The laborers in our field are unashamed. The essence of our service is excellence. The beat of our hearts is souls. The evidence of our generosity is compassion. The pattern of our growth is unprecedented. This is the difference. We believed it. We believed the sick could be healed and we lay hands on the sick and the crippled walk, the blind saw the deaf heart. We believed that we can have the biggest ministries and it has happened. Everything we have believed God for has worked. What a salvation. The vision of our future is glorious. 10th August 2024 at the Kololo Independence Grounds. We're going to see miracles in our times like never before. We're going to see signs and wonders like never before. Uganda is going to become small. Africa is going to become small. Asia is going to become small. Not by power, not by might, but by the Spirit of God. A decade of God's grace. Fenero, make manifest.